Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, or Aquaman 2 if you really don't care enough to remember the full title, is here, and it's been slapped down by the critics. Audiences do seem to quite like it though, if Rotten Tomatoes is any indication, so I wonder which side is review bombing this time, eh? I guess we'll probably have to wait until they tell us, like always, eh? But uh, anyway, by all accounts, Amber Heard has been significantly reduced to a scant 11 lines of dialogue in the movie, and major scenes were apparently cut out, including a love scene, probably because she is an abusive, lying, toxic little harpy who tried to defame her ex-husband and ruin his career. Honestly, it's just actually amazing. How many people still try to defend this noisy little trollop? But then again, I guess they were the same people who voted for Joe Biden, so they can't exactly be called sound judges of character, can they? In any case, let's take a look at everything that's going on with Aquaman 2. Hello and welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will. See what I did there? Hope you're having a lovely, lovely day. If you would be so kind, hit the like button if you find that you're enjoying this content as I'm making it. And of course, remember, you can always subscribe to the channel as well if you'd like to help me in the fight against complete and total insanity and the ruination of all of our entertainment and all of that bad bad stuff. Let's go over to Business Insider here and have a quick look. There are spoilers in this article, by the way, major spoilers for Amber Heard's very unimportant scenes, so if you care about that, you may not want to watch, but that's entirely up to you. Abquaman 2 diminishes Amber Heard's role to a mere 11 lines, grunts, and a laugh. Uh, here come the spoilers. Um, she appears in the Aquaman sequel, but her role is barely a fleshed out character. She returns as Mira, Aquaman's love interest, but fans may be surprised by how little she's actually in Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. Would anybody actually be surprised at this? I mean, I think everybody in the world knows why she is a liability to Hollywood at this point. I mean, she's responsible for basically destroying any validity that the Me Too movement had, she should be the enemy of absolutely every feminist in the world at the moment. And she is, of course, remember, the most disliked celebrity in the world. Even more than Meghan Markle. Which is quite impressive when you think about just how many people fucking hate Meghan Markle. Despite being a lead in 2018's Aquaman, Mira is minimized to a tertiary character with little dialogue in the sequel, even though she's now married to Arthur Curry slash Aquaman and has given birth to their newborn uh, child. During the defamation trial against her former husband, Johnny Depp, Heard testified that she was given a pared-down role in the sequel, claiming some of her action scenes were removed and she fought to stay in the movie. In the same trial, Walter Hamada, the man who destroyed the DCEU, oh sorry, sorry, the former president of Warner Brothers DC Films, denied that, that claim during a pre-recorded deposition, saying Heard was never a co-lead in the sequel. Well, that's very unlikely, isn't it? It's very, very unlikely that if that hadn't happened, if that trial hadn't happened, and if she hadn't been caught red-handed lying and being the abuser, rather than the abusee and proven by overwhelming evidence in a court of law and judged to be so by a jury of her peers that this wouldn't have had more merit in it. Anyway, in October, Variety reported at least two scenes with Heard were cut, including a fight with the villain Black Manta and a love scene with Aquaman. Does that mean a sex scene? I have no idea. But, I mean, who cares anyway? It's not like it's anyone wants to see Amber Heard in having sex, do they? Though Heard appears briefly in a few action sequences in the first 35 minutes and the final half hour, a total screen time clocks in at just 15 to 20 minutes, which is way too much still. In the under two hour film, she has a total of 11 brief speaking parts. And here come the spoilers as such, if you care, as I'm going to read every single line she has in the movie. Ready? And in the first 35 minutes, she says, Arthur, the council has called for an emergency gathering. There's been another plague outbreak. Uh, then she says to the council, there haven't been outbreaks like this in ages, why now? To Aquaman's mom, Atlanta, they raided the storage vault, we can't let them get away. In the final half hour, Mera speaks about Black Manta to Atlanta, Orm and Aquaman in the longest line of dialogue. Where's Junior? Uh, she says in the fifth line, no, she says in number six. Uh, number seven is not with Junior in the crossfire. Number eight, that's right, ultrasonic echoes. Number nine, I sent something in the water. Ten... Thank you. 11. Yes, all this ice. It'd be impossible to find the body. Well, I mean, she'd know a thing or two about trying to cover up evidence, wouldn't she? Anyway, early on, Mira appears ruling Atlantis and carrying out sessions with the Council. When Atlantis is attacked, Mira jumps into action to defend her people and gets critically injured by Black Manta. She's sidelined for the majority of the movie, healing until she returns in the final act to help Aquaman and Orm defeat Black Manta. And I suppose that's about as good as you can possibly do. If you really just 
don't want to recast her with somebody else. Like, who are they planning to recast her with? Uh, a while ago, Amelia Clark, I think. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and have a look here at the uh, Rotten Tomatoes page for Aquaman 2. And we can see that apparently no amount of uh, cutting Amber Heard out of it has helped the critical score. Or, in fact, maybe that's why. It has a dismal 37%. How often do you see major releases like this get bombed by critics? Meanwhile, of course, 77% from over 100 verified audience ratings. Uh, we can have a look at a little bit more detail here. We can see top critics. Uh, let me just uh, grab this and pull it over a bit more for you. Uh, all critics is 37%. Top critics is 27%. Yikes! That is fucking shocking. Okay, verified audience says 77%. All audience says 67%. Okay, so there are people who are maybe, possibly, review bombing. If that's um, what we can take from the fact that the verified audience score is higher than the all audience score. Meaning that only the people who've actually verified that they bought the tickets and actually went to see the movie. Wow, I need to slow down. Um are here on the higher score. While the audience score is considerably higher with 500 ratings. And uh, a lot of it seems to be saying some bad stuff. We're going to dive in and have a look at some of these reviews quickly then uh, before we finish this video. And we can see a few of these are fresh, but the overwhelming majority of them are rotten. Um, let's go in then. Joseph Robinson from Fish Jelly Films YouTube says, Words I would use to describe Aquaman and the Long Lost Kingdom. Random, scattered, busy, pointless, corny, loquacious, and tedious. Okay. Uh, Avi Offer from NYC Movie Guru says, An overproduced, asinine, anemic, and underwhelming spectacle. Woof, that's a bit harsh, isn't it? That's just disappointing as Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. Well, man, they just got to get it in there, haven't they? Perhaps it would work better as a video game rather than a movie. Are you slagging off video games now? Scott Mendelssohn, oh, good sinister-looking friend there from uh, The Outside Scoop, formerly of Forbes. <laughs> Any case, uh, it's a substack. He says, uh, it's another three-star DC film sequel to a four-star DC films part one. But Aquaman 2 is an entertaining, visually spectacular, and wildly inventive standalone action fantasy. If this is the DCEU's time to go, James Wan gave us a hell of a show. I haven't seen it, so I couldn't possibly comment. Maybe you've seen it. Let me know in the comments. There's over $200 million worth of eye candy in the story of our hero's attempt to save the world from Black Manta and global warming... Whoa, they're pushing that message. Ah, uh, we don't like that message around these parts. Especially because I live in a tropical country where it's over 30 degrees every day. That's Celsius, of course. And about $5 worth of originality in the screenplay. Ooh. So, that's actually... Like, that, that doesn't look in remotely like it should be fresh next to it. $200 million worth of eye candy... Five million dollars, uh, sorry, five dollars worth of originality in the screenplay. Fresh. Three out of five. Well, I guess if you're going to grade out of five, then yeah. If you grade it out of six, then it would be rotten. But that's the way the system works, I suppose. Uh, that's Russ Simmons from KKFI FM, Kansas City Radio, I suppose. Um, Evan Dossey of the Midwest Film Journal says, Frankly, even referring to Lost Kingdom as finished is generous. Someone once said a book is never finished, only abandoned. That rather adequately describes this one. Well, I mean, that would be um, appropriate for a movie that we know is ending the DCEU as we know it. It's the last thing to be shat out of the DCEU before it gets handed fully over to James Gunn. And Peter, I want to say Saffron, but I'm not 100% I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've talked about them. As they are going to take over and uh, rejig the entire DCU, no E. Uh, David Poland from Hot Button says the movie first from f the first long expositional voiceover sequence feels like a construction project started without a blueprint that they then tried to piece back together to make some sense. Valerie Complex from Deadline Hollywood says the first Aquaman film maintains a balance of seriousness and fantasy. The Lost Kingdom ve veers into cartoonish territory. Um, what else we got? What else we got? Um... 
Film companion Jay Shruti says, All that remains as you walk out of the theatre is a deluge of rocks uncomfortably drubbing at your aesthetic convictions with none of the emotional heft seeping its way in. Wall Street Journal Amy Nicholson says, The sequel has an excuse, nay, a financial imperative to get even wetter and weirder, yet plot-wise, we're given much of the same. So there you have it, uh, Aquaman 2 getting absolutely destroyed by the critics. If you go and have a look at some of the audience scores, you're going to see single line reviews that just say, hey, I liked it, it was great. Hey, I liked it, it was great. And um, I'm not really sure that any of them have enough meat on them to make it worth reading for you. But you can go ahead and check them out at Rotten Tomatoes yourself. And let me know what you think. Are we witnessing critical review bombing or are we re witnessing audience review brigading? Is this movie good? Have you seen it? Let me know. I don't give a crap. I'm not going to waste my time going to see it over the Christmas period. I'm too busy making videos for you. Speaking of which, let me know how you feel about everything in the whole world and the whole universe in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to Will of the Fans if you'd like to see more of me because I'd love to see more of you. I'll be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, remember to question everything and I'll see you next time.